The Ancient Hebrew Wedding, Part 3b, The Pattern and the Blueprint. This is a continuation from Part 3, where we talked about building the meta bride and wife through balance and truth. In the previous session, we discussed the word tabneeth as the pattern and blueprint to become spiritually built from the bride to the wife, a metaphysical change. We will be shedding light on the truth of balance in our reality in this session. In part 3a, we spoke of a balance between the divine masculine and divine feminine within. Here is another word used to describe balance, cochette. They've translated it in English as truth. But in the Strong's definition, we see that it is from an unused root meaning to balance. Equity, as evenly weighed. Included example is reality. So truth is reality, equity, and balance. Let's take a look at Cochette through metaology in its root form, its potential. Those who compress light by understanding the difference between light and dark, positive and negative, masculine and feminine, in the circle of time will go through the refining fire in order to overcome the fallen flesh, ego, beast nature. This will be a wrestle, a wrestle with the teachings of mother and father who present the vision of overcoming so that you can be marked with the sign of the Father's covenant. This is purpose to bring inner balance to you, in equity, the place of neutrality, in reality, as your truth, in metodology. You may have noticed that as I mentioned having the Father's mark, Cochette ended with a tet and not a top. In the letters of the deep series, I broke down the tet and how it is spelled through its constituent letters. For those of you who've watched that series, you will be able to comprehend this and how the wrestle will produce the intention of the mark or keep you in a state of wrestle dependent on choice. The wrestle is always meant as a catalyst for change. Are you stiff-necked or are you humble? Humility is where you pass the test, the wrestle. Stiff-necked pride will keep you wrestling the same test over and over again until the behavior is changed. The change of the symbol is the change of status. Something that I feel is relevant, that should be shared, is that in the Paleo-Hebrew, the symbol kuf shows duality. It shows the negative and positive, light and dark, the divine feminine and the divine masculine. It is a picture of the sun at the horizon and it has the meaning of condense, circle, and time. It is also showing that there is something hidden below the horizon, as well as something revealed above the horizon. Mother is revealed, but father is concealed. The middle line separates. It is the place where we are balanced between the two, becoming one, if we can get rid of the beast ego within. That is which wars against us, within and without, separating and dividing instead of uniting. There's a tremendous amount of information here within these few letters of Cochette that I didn't break down and share. What I bring forth is meant to pique your interest to study this for yourself. 
If you are seeking balance in your life within all areas, especially within relationships, then these languages are here to assist us. The only difficulty lies in that it will change you only. So unless another is willing to study as well, then balance will be difficult to achieve. I can see now why being equally yoked is important. Without both partners having spirit, you will not be able to achieve oneness. Without spirit, you cannot receive these teachings as they are spiritual in nature. To share something personal, in my life, I used to have great pendulum swings from one extreme to another. If I would swing to the right and it didn't bring resolve, which is on the tree of life, severity, divine feminine, then I would swing hard to the left, which is the mercy and divine masculine. I have sought to find balance so that my swings in problem solving, whether it be on projects or with people or my own emotional resolve, are not as extreme. I have found that studying these letters to be a major component component to assist me in progressing and maturing in my emotional state to be more harmonious, producing shalom. Too far to the right, it is aggression and war. Too far to the left, pacifism that can be pushed over. It's the middle path, which is of temperance, the balance, having shalom. I have found that it's taken a while, which means that there's a greater consistency within myself to walk more evenly in maturation. This in turn, it affects all relationships around me, starting with myself. I have little conflict within, meaning that I do not project my inner conflict on others. This then allows me to extend love to others in a greater measure without projecting my inner conflict onto others. This process itself then brings peace to my outer world. Simply stated, if we all can find the balance within, bringing shalom to ourselves by balancing and tempering the divinity within, between the masculine and the feminine, we then can change and bring it into our world. Peace will never happen externally until it happens internally. Just imagine how our marriages would be strengthened. It would be amazing. And then we could extend it to our families, communities, cities, states, countries, and then finally globally. This is why knowing the ancient Hebrew wedding and its purpose can bring peace on earth through goodwill towards man. It starts with you and me. This process will affect our reality. Cochette. Once we stop wrestling through the tet and settle with the top, this means that we also stop wrestling with the Father spiritually as well, setting us free in truth, in reality, preparing us for the divine marriage in becoming one, where we are equally yoked within ourselves. Can you begin to see how this prepares us spiritually for that in the physical and vice versa? Macro and micro, as above, so below, and so below, as above. It is and always will be about drawing us together within instead of dividing us apart. I do have a side note to share here. And this isn't a criticism, it's just more of an observation. Within the Hebrew Roots movement, which I was a part of for a few years, many that are linear thinking find their way there and stay there. It's very black and white. 
They hold themselves to teachings meant to bring us to the age of accountability. But they never graduated from mother's teaching, which then arrests their spiritual development, never perfecting in love, but remaining imperfect in judgment. Again, I'm not judging, as we are all on the path of spiritual growth. This was just an observation when I was there. Our fruits produce the sum total of where we are all at. There is another entire teaching through Father to bring the balance to us, koshet, maturing us. They, in the Hebrew Roots Movement, have not been aware of the second portion of the spiritual teaching. One teaching is rooted in fear, in reverential terms, and is binding. That is Mother's teaching, black and white. In the Hebrew Roots Movement, they're still bound in Mother's teaching and have not yet been set free through Father's teaching. Father's teaching is full of love and freedom. It's no longer bound. It's all of the Father. They are still bound in the teaching, and we have heard that we need to come out of her, my people. I'm going to suggest that we're to come out of Mother. She is meant to bind you in order to deal with your beast nature, but at some point you will outgrow her. It's meant to be that way. You will grow hungry as milk will not do. That is when it's time to come out of her and then come into the Father and his teaching. For those in a faith that is binding, well, different denominations of Christianity, the Hebrew Roots Movement, Messianic Judaism, as well as other forms of religion, once the beast nature has been tamed, it is time to come up to a higher revelation. But without the education of mother through the Hebrew language, all will have to enter as a little child and learn again going through her milk teachings to the father's meat teachings. Those within the Hebrew root movement, which I have a heart for, are still in the severity side, mother, hence the strong judgment of others. They have not yet entered into the mercy side of the teaching through father. Those within Christianity are too far on the mercy side of the father, having not entered into mother's teaching, hence not having the milk of the word. And that's why Paul says that they must learn the milk. I'm referring to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the sayings of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. These juxtapositions between mother and father create the two outer pillars of the tree of life. When looking at this picture, mother would be on your right side and father is on your left. So this image, you would be facing it. So just turn it around so that you're facing outward, mother on right and father on left. If you are only on the side of mother, severity, you will become too hard and will desire war and be judgmental. However, having only the mercy side of Father, you can become too soft and be a pushover, one who can be taken an advantage of. This is the hard pendulum swing I was speaking of for me, experiencing both sides. We need to seek the balance between the two. And the teachings of mother and father through the Hebrew and Aramaic letters will get you there if you apply what is being taught. This is the balance that we should desire and should be seeking. I'm only making suggestions.
As the cherubim face one another, as a pattern, tabneeth, they continually point to each other. Mother points to father, and father points to mother. The middle path, the way of the arrow, this is the path of the mystic. In scripture, the glory of God dwells between. I am going to suggest to you that the sephirot that is hidden, da'at, the hidden knowledge, is the hidden manna, Father's teaching, inside the ark, as it deals with what is inside of us. Internal. It is from the word yada, meaning to know intimately, literally, euphemistically, as in Adam knew Eve, his wife, and inferentially. But now, from Yada, we have the Father's mark added. This manna is for the inside of you. Mother, who conditions your outside orientation, is found in the letters that are added on the prefix of a word. Father, who conditions your inside and reorientates it, is found in the added letters on the suffix side of the word. God, source's intention, which is potential needed to be acted upon, is the root of the word. This action is represented, the action that we take in becoming, is represented by the deletion and the adding of letters from the root word form. You are represented here in the root as well, as a fragment of L, God becoming L. This root represents your heart. The root of the word is your heart, and that's where God, L, is. This is where we become God within. Do you remember the phase, God eternal within the body? We shared this in the second teaching of the Letters of the Deep. This will always be about the change of your heart from a beast into the image of God, of El. It is crucial that we find balance within ourselves in becoming the manifested daughters who are sons of God in the earth. God, El, manifest. These daughters who are sons, have found the divine, sacred union within. They are meta, changed beyond, now in union and balanced. One, echad. This is the process, the pattern, tabneeth, for the becoming. Much of what has been written in English speaks of sons only and the daughters are hidden until revealed. It is not that the feminine is bad or wicked or even lesser. The feminine will be elevated and has been hidden until now. As we have entered into the age of Aquarius, this is the time of the divine feminine energies returning. She will be revealed. The sacred union in marriage is imminent. The yoking of the divine feminine, and masculine as equal. The sun is the first part of the teaching so that we can become the revealed daughters who have went the way of the sun. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeshua came to give us mother's teaching so that we could learn it and then be empowered to receive the father's portion, raising us up to be leaders manifested. Greater things we will do, those who have built themselves through the pattern. Tabneeth. This wedding is more important spiritually than we can truly know in our current state, but it is what we are encouraged to, desi to desire and then to become. Next time we will answer the question of who is Adam Kadmon, and why does it matter? Until then, follow the pattern in the blueprint.
Tavni. Shalom. Shalom.